Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play I Want to Be the Barrage. Uh, this is Moogie, and we're going to be enjoying some more lovely Don Maka today. Yes, this time we've got the extra stage in front of us, and if you remember last time, we had a horrible message telling us to abandon all hope. Uh, yeah, this message doesn't really make me very... I optimistic, I suppose, about what's going to happen next. No, well, we've only got one stage to choose from. How bad can it be? And it's Rumia again. Yes, and this bullet pattern is actually incredibly difficult to dodge. Uh, there's really no actual pattern to it. It is static, but good luck memorizing whatever the fuck it is. And the bullets are really fast, and they curve in a way that's pretty much impossible to read. But there's a safe spot, it looks like. Yeah, sorry, kill. <laughs> <laughs> he finally got his shout out well this is his second shout out actually second shout out but yeah uh, this is just the point of this attack is finding the safe spot as you can see it's very very difficult yeah uh, it's a pretty good start to the extra stage I think yes that was uh, easier than I thought it would be but don't worry because 5-2 is infinitely worse so uh, you were we were talking about death counts earlier Yes, yes we were. And I had, at this point in the game, something like 750 deaths. 750? Alright. Yeah. This stage, I died on 400 times. So <laughs> uh, that's uh, like more than half of what you already had. Yeah. So it might not look too hard, I'm just kind of bouncing up and down uh, near Kasume and yeah, dodging these rings. Yeah, this doesn't look rings. that bad. But the issue is that the rings are actually really, really tight. And they uh, expand and contract in a way that makes the bullets much more difficult to dodge than they might look just at a glance. Yeah, this is one of those stages that kind of looks easy. And then another issue is that controlling the kid in the air is actually pretty tricky. So at this point in the game, a player probably has been learning air control of the kid for a while. This stage requires much, much finer control than any stage before it. Yeah, it bears repeating that these are the exact I want to be the guy physics and controls. They haven't been altered in any way for Don Maku play. Yeah, so I can't just float up here next to her. I have to keep jumping and jumping the right amount to keep myself where I want to be. And the dodge between these tiny caps and the bullets. Yeah. Now, another issue is that her hitbox is huge. Uh, her hitbox is her, her entire sprite, which means that her hair can and will kill you. And will right. probably kill you hundreds of times when you're trying to do this at first. So you've got to actually worry about the boss's sprite, which I don't think you have had to yet. Yeah. Now you might think that you can dodge on the side of the screen, or at the bottom, but you can't. The bullets travel too fast, and as I said, they expand and contract, which means that you can't read what they're doing at all. So yeah, they'll just kill you if you try that. Yeah, it, it looks like you got some uh, blank space, but kind of looking at it, it, does, it yeah, you're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So the nice thing about that stage is I actually got better at it at it as time went along, and it helped oh. develop my air control skills. So now I can beat it without too much horrible trouble. Uh, did you actually save there? Uh, I probably saved on an earlier recording that didn't okay. get captured this. Now, and it looks, it looks like the exercise is going through all the bosses. Yeah, that's kind of the gimmick here. Uh, congratulations on noticing that. That's some pretty advanced game design recognition skills that you have. I, I was trying to comment on something. <laughs> yeah, this stage doesn't have much to comment on so far, does it? So, it's pretty obvious that all these bullets are aimed at me. Right. And that's the gimmick for this entire level. This reminds me of uh, the Bub boss and I Want to Be the Fan game. Ah, now that you mention it, it does. Especially once the vertical bullets come in. Yeah. Of course, I'm sure it's a lot harder. Actually, it's not that difficult. I mean, we've said before that you don't want to listen to me when I say something in this game isn't that difficult. And the buff boss is probably easier in, yeah. for, like, the average I want to be the player. For the average human being. Yeah, but by this point in the game, uh, by this point in I want to be the barrage, especially after you've gone through 5-2, you have so much precise air control with the kid, that dodging all this isn't too hard because it's all aimed at you and what this means is that if I keep going around the stage in a circle then everything gets misdirected in such a way that uh, it's not really a threat so I still have to thread through all these bullets but I have plenty of time to do it and plenty of space also 
And I believe we have new new bullet sprites here for all that matters. Uh, yeah, those might be. I'm not sure if we've seen those before. Now that I think of it. Although this is actually kind of like one of Chen's stages in Shoot the Bullet. I have I'm no idea which one, though. It's been so long since yeah. I've played that. I'm not very familiar with Shoot the Bullet. <laughs> now, that bubble there, it aims towards me every time it uh, hits a surface, and it also speeds up. And this, and fi this final uh, white trail, I need to make sure that starts up in the corner so I have enough time to go around the edge of the screen when the stage ends. The screen kind of gets filled up with shit. That would probably give me uh, problems on that one. Yeah, it's not as bad as it looks, which is not something I can say about this level. So, I didn't mention a death count for 5-3, and the reason right. for that is I probably died less than 10 times. As I said, it's not a very difficult stage, especially once you've got the finer control mastered. This stage, on the other hand, uh, is another stage I died over 400 times on. Oh, cool. May, I, I think more, because by this point, I had about 1,600 deaths total. By, by, not by this point, but after beating the stage, I had about 1,600 deaths total. What about uh, play time? Is it also shows that? Uh, if I recall correctly, I was about at 11 hours and 15 minutes when I beat the stage. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so... This... Uh. <laughs> yeah, this, por this portion kind of speaks for itself. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it looks like you've got to make some uh, pretty tight jumps there. Yeah, you do. But, uh, the thing that makes this portion of the stage more possible and approachable is that all the hitboxes are really small. So these uh. bullets are really skinny, which means that, and they only travel perfectly horizontally and vertically, which right. means that they're, it's easy to uh, dodge them if you know where your hitbox is. Unfortunately, there's also this uh, dick move at the end, where if you do this at all wrong, you're going to die before the timer <laughs> runs down completely. Yeah. So do you just have to like inch your way across the entire screen? I'll talk about it a bit more when we see it again, but first there's okay. actually a part of this stage that deserves special mention, and it's probably not the one you're thinking. And we're in montage time now. Yep, you always know that's a good sign. Yes. So, the most difficult portion of this stage is actually climbing down the left wall here. Right, because it's pretty difficult to control the kid going downward in the air. Yeah, so when I was uh, going against 5-2, I learned how to control the kid precisely in the air, but that focused mostly on keeping him in the same place, or getting him where I wanted him to be. With this, I have to make him fall very slowly, but fast enough so that the bubbles don't kill me. And obviously, since you're doing that by jumping repeatedly, it's uh, going to be a bit hard. Yeah, there's, and this portion also goes on for a really long time. I think there's 25 or 26 of these bubbles that aim at the kid as you're going down. Right. Now, to make matters worse, the bubbles leave these streams of bullets behind them. And sometimes uh, this stream of bullets will cause a one of those bar bullets to spawn at the side of the screen, making you move away from the side. And this is bad because this adds another axis to the movement that you have to focus on, which makes right. it much easier to screw up. So the whole goal of this is to get as many of the bubble bullets to hit the left side hand of the screen as possible, which keeps the bullets they spawn from walling you off against the right hand side wall, because you eventually have to go through the wall they create. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, moving through that wall is mostly a matter of luck. Uh, I mean, it's not luck in that you have to actually successfully get these bullets to hit the left-hand side wall as much as possible. But even then, there's a lot of luck involved in making in there being a path that you can actually get through. But yeah, I can't comment on much in the pattern itself, but uh, this level shows what I like about the concept of the game, which is... Uh, Basically, platforming controls plus Don Maku attacks, which I think is pretty unique. Yeah, I really like that as well. And I, I, I don't even know of anything else that does this. I don't know anything else that does it as successfully. There's some pretty um, bad-looking I-want-to-be-the-guy Toho crossover things. Yeah, uh, I think we can disregard those. <laughs> 
But anyway, this portion of the attack uh, probably looks terrifying, but it's not actually that bad. As long as you can read what's going on, which granted you probably can't. There's a lot of space between the bullets, and most of them I don't really have to dodge. The one tricky part is when she changes the rotation of the bubbles from counterclockwise to clockwise. Because that means that two waves pass over the kid in quick right. succession. You've got kind of a grid going on. Yeah, and a lot of these bullets, I can just, the horizontal ones, I can just uh, let them pass through the kid's head and I won't be harmed. So the trick to this final portion is to begin moving left as late as possible. When you saw this earlier, I started moving left a bit too early, and so I got walled off and died. Right. But since I it doesn't look that bad once you uh, figure out how to do the end part. The end part's not. Everything before it is. Again, yeah. more than 400 deaths, and that's not a stage I can just go back and beat again like I can with 5-2. Uh, and we're back on Rumia with some stars. Yes. To be fair, this was this is uh, from Rumia's most difficult attack back in 1-6. Is this another safe spot stage? Okay. No, it's not. Oh, it's... Oh my god. So, you probably figured out what's going on. Yeah. Uh, all the bosses are going to appear and pitch in some of their bullets in an effort to kill me. Although, amusingly, uh, the main problem is actually Kisume's bullets right here, for now, because they force me to move around since they are uh, streaming. Right. The other stuff isn't very dense. Chen's bullets are a very odd choice because most of them don't even get low enough on the screen. These are her bullets from one, I'm sorry, from three six, and she started right. at the middle of the screen in that stage, so it doesn't work too well here. I guess he was trying to make it not too bullshit. I guess, but Letty comes in and uh, she adds a whole cataclysm of clusterfuck to the screen. <laughs> that actually makes it pretty difficult to dodge. Yeah, at this point, I think a lot of, a lot of the, I, I don't think a lot of people will even be able to read what's going on with these attacks. I'm pretty sure that's been the case for a while now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just felt like making that statement. I mean, for myself, it all seems perfectly readable, but I know for the average viewer, that's not going to be the case. Yeah, I, I've played a lot of Don Locker games myself, but uh, this stuff is kind of. I mean, maybe it's just the. The style of the game, since you also have to focus on uh, the character as a like a platforming element. Well, but there's just too much shit on the screen. One of the tricky elements is that this game has a standard aspect ratio right. for the gameplay portion, whereas most Dan Maku shooters have a vertically oriented aspect ratio for their gameplay. That's a good point. And uh, this means that when you want to get furthest away from the bullet spawning, you want to get in the corner, which puts you at a shallower angle, which makes things trickier to read in general. There's right. also it's more space on the screen for bullets to fill up. Yeah, kind of interesting how the aspect ratio alone can affect gameplay like that. Now, this attack actually isn't that difficult when all is said and done. I mean, uh, Letty adds a whole shitstorm of shit to the screen. But as long as you keep, you keep a level head and keep moving to avoid uh, Kisume's streaming shots, then the rest isn't as dense as it probably looks. All in all, this attack, I think, only took me like 20 minutes to beat. Probably died 10 or 15 times. I'd like to note that when Kevin says something is uh, not that bad, it probably is that bad. <laughs> well, it's not as bad as 5-2 or 5-4. Uh, I mean, I think that's fair to say. I didn't die 400 times on it. Well, that, that's an improvement, I suppose. But for all of you people disappointed that I didn't die 400 times on that attack... Well, we've got something special in store for our next video, so stay tuned. See ya.